des gens à travers le monde, reconnaissant le docteur Gustave Gingra, un Québécois de naissance, comme l'ambassadeur des personnes handicapées. Well, he was the ambassador for the handicap. Uh... We called him uh, Mr. Rehabilitation. Uh, he was the ambassador because uh, uh, he was their voice for so many years. He was their voice uh, at all levels of governments and private agencies. Le travail du Dr. Gingra auprès des paraplégiques à l'hôpital des vétérans à Montréal l'a amené à mettre sur pied l'Institut de réadaptation à Montréal en 1948. People that had fought for this country, he was such a, a, a gentleman, such a, a fanatic of Canada that, you know, he, and he says, what can we do for these people? And I believe that that's the time that he found out a little bit what he would like to do. He got, got people moving and, and he got them thinking, no, uh, I'm not going to spend my life in bed or in a wheelchair. I'm going to go out and, uh, and uh, compete in society. It wasn't done with a scalpel. It wasn't done with drugs. It was just done with common sense. Il a vécu avec la passion de donner un sens à la vie des personnes handicapées. Plus tard, par suite de son travail avec la Croix-Rouge et les Nations Unies, le Dr. Gingra a mis sur pied des centres semblables au Maroc, en Venezuela et au Vietnam. As soon as there was a, a major disaster somewhere, The Canadian government was always giving a phone call to Mr. Gingra. You see, Dr. Gingra had a very strong personality. He was the type to be a general, not a, a private. Fort défenseur des droits des handicapés, il a exercé pression sur le gouvernement et les institutions sociales dans le but de promouvoir la mise en œuvre des accès et des facilités pour les enfants handicapés à l'école. Dr. Jean Gras' philosophy was, it was not the child that was handicapped. It's the environment that made the child handicapped. Now it's general. You, you have laws uh, for abolishing architectural bar barriers. You have laws for uh, uh, accepting uh, children in school. You have laws for hiring handicapped people, etc. That was not uh, the same thing at that time. Le Dr. Gingra a aussi mis sur pied un programme canadien de réadaptation pour les victimes de la thalidomide. He couldn't talk about thalidomide uh, and the thalidomide task force without breaking into tears. He was a very emotional man. He couldn't do it. It didn't take him long to realize that, yes, uh, thalidomide was a terrible disaster, uh, but we don't give up. Ceux qui le connaissaient étaient fascinés par cet homme débordant d'énergie et d'optimisme qui s'intéressait vivement aux patients comme des individus afin de développer au maximum leurs capacités fonctionnelles restantes. He was always saying, try to give a goal to someone, and that person will achieve the goal. Take away all of the goals from that person. He'll be bedridden for the rest of his days. And he just instilled. It's corny to say it, I guess, but he just instilled hope in people uh, whom prior to that had no hope. Dr. Gingras' life was rehabilitation medicine. He thought of that. He uh, did that for all his life. Uh, I think it occupied his mind 24 hours a day. Atteint d'une maladie neurologique dégénérative dans les dernières années de sa vie, le docteur Gustave Gingra a donné lui-même l'exemple de la leçon la plus importante qu'il avait toujours prêchée aux autres. Ne jamais abdiquer et mettre l'accent sur les capacités restantes plutôt que sur ce qu'on a perdu. He never forgot the, the lessons because he used to say to me, now I'm living them. But I always realized what it was like. But now I'm living them.